to this is Mike Frost, the post post modernist poetry prognosticator. Today I'd like to take a little bit of time to talk to you about my experience reading The Long Take, a noir narrative by Robin Robinson. It's a narrative poem, so it falls into our category. And I usually like to start with the title of a piece and then work my way into the review. But in this case, I'd like to start with the subtitle, the noir narrative, because Robin Robinson harkens back to the original idea of noir as created by writers like Raymond Chandler and James Elroy, uh, who started what was the original thing was hard-boiled detective fiction. And then they started writing noir, which was a, originally a sub-genre of hard-boiled detective fiction. But the term noir caught on, thanks to the French mainly, and became the term of use and it, through time, hard-boiled detective fiction took on almost as if it were a subgenre of noir rather than as it was originally. Hard-boiled detective fiction was the original writing and then noir was a subgenre. The two genres or subgenres uh, have a lot of similarities, but there are some differences between hard-boiled detective fiction and noir fiction. As, it was origi as the original idea was brought forth by those great writers. Uh, Hard-boiled detective fiction, as a, the title might indicate, always had some sort of detective, some kind of crime fighter in it, uh, a, a cop, a newspaper writer, a private detective, something along those lines. As were noir fiction, not necessarily could, but not necessarily had any kind of crime fighter in it. There was usually a crime in both, but in noir, it was more about the social issue, the crimes of the social issue. But both, if I can put them side by side, both of them would be considered dark fiction, rough fiction, direct fiction. Uh, they both are almost always urban settings. There's almost always um, a femme fatale, it's a female that's uh, in a lead that almost always creates problems. Uh, in this case, in this narrative, there is not. Uh, there's always violence, um, and it almost always, now it's changed over time, but in the original idea, almost always took place in the 40s and 50s, which is where this particular narrative poem is set in the 40s and 50s. So those are the similarities. The differences would be in the original idea of the hard-boiled detective fiction, the lead, the, the main character, in, in both of them are flawed characters what we would almost associate nowadays with anti-heroes. Rather than heroes, they'd be the anti-hero. It's not exactly the same, but that's the, the term that would come to mind now. They're very flawed characters. But in hard-boiled detective fiction, the detective, although very flawed in his own right, usually had some sort of code or some redeeming quality that forced him to keep going to solve the crime despite the ramifications to himself or others. Whereas in noir fiction, without the crime fighter, usually the, the lead character is, as in hard-boiled detective fiction, a flawed character. But in noir, in the original idea, there's almost no redeeming quality. You just, and there's no great prize at the end of a noir. It's usually a downward spiral in which you watch the protagonist basically self-destruct. And in this case, in this narrative fiction, that's what we have. We have noir fiction as its original idea of noir fiction was, not the later morphing of the term to where hard-boiled detective fiction became a subgenre and some of these other things. No, this is noir in its original idea, a flawed character whom we watch self-destruct through the novel. So it's that's the a noir narrative. The long take is a reference to the movies that, that Robin Robinson used as the basis and the ideas it generated for it for this book came out of movies. The long take is essentially a film style where you have one camera fixed in one location, sometimes like in the back seat watching people drive, and it's just one long conversation between characters without changing of camera angles. We're used to now in our movies, every three or four seconds, the camera angle changes, something changes, background changes. The long take is the idea of a very steady 
one camera angle. And that's essentially what we have here in one long narrative poem following this character into self-destruction is what we have. And Robin Robinson, I'm familiar with some of his poetry. I'm, I, I, it wasn't like high up on my poetry list, but I am familiar with some of his poetry and I'm familiar with him as a poet. He's a Scottish poet. And all of this takes place as the, the main character in this narrative poem is a Canadian from Nova Scotia. But, and it takes place in New York, L.A. and San Francisco primarily. Um, but Robin Robinson is from, he's a Scottish guy, a uh, Scottish poet, well known in that area and also here in the United States. He was famously told once that his poetry centers around sex, alcohol, and death. And I think his response was something to the effect of, yeah, and it's important to keep him in that order. So Robin Robinson is the right man for the task of trying to write a noir narrative poem. A dark, most of his poetry is dark. It's not, there's a lack of humor in his poetry, unless you're into dark humor, I suppose. Uh, but Robin Robinson is the right guy for this poem. So the long take is very much a noir narrative in that it follows the protagonist, a guy named Walker, as he, uh, he's originally from Nova Scotia, as I said, he, he joins the military, goes into World War II, and he comes back a broken man. And he feels like he can't go home because he can't let his parents and the girl he left behind see him in this state of brokenness. So he starts by going to New York City and the poem opens there. And then it, he travels to L.A. and from L.A. to San Francisco and back to L.A. In L.A., he becomes a newspaper writer. He joins a newspaper. By this time and all, all this time, he's a heavy drinker. By the time he gets into the newspaper, he's probably what we would now refer to as a working alcoholic. And he takes on the task of reporting on the homeless situation. So he travels, he goes from L.A., from reporting on it in L.A. to going to San Francisco, reporting on the homeless situation. And most of these homeless folks are vets from World War II, the forgotten, the ones that have come home and have been discarded by society. And they end up on the streets, a lot of veterans and others that are the victims of social change and the aftermath of the World War II. Uh, and he continues to report on this throughout the the narrative poem or novel, if you will. So that, that's essentially the plot line. In noir fiction, there's not a heavy, because there's not a crime to be solved, there's no resolution. So it's just basically the, a plot line is the following of the character. And it's, you follow him physically from New York City to LA to San Francisco, back to LA. And you follow him in his route of self-destruction through alcoholism he suffers from PTSD, he um, has a lot of, he's a flawed character, and flawed because of his experience in World War II, and some of the things that he saw and did in World War II. So in following that character, you follow the plot line. And the, the book is divided into four parts, 1946, 1948, uh, 50. I remember 50, 51 and 53, so the, the years. So you're following them through those, there's shots of each year that you're following along with in those things. The themes that they're, that go, this is a very complex narrative poem. And Robin Robinson tries to capture a lot of stuff in this thing. The, if I can categorize main themes in this, uh, PTSD is one of them. This character suffers from PTSD. And you, you watch the progression of that and how it adds to and complicates his self-destruction. Um, some of the other themes in there is uh, the idea that American cities have no history because we change. There was a lot of social and physical changes to cities during this era right after World War II. A lot of the, the place where he comes to in L.A. is in the early or mid-40s. There's a lot of tearing down and rebuilding of structures. There's a lot of, and in this process, the homeless are just pushed to one side, ignored, pushed out. Uh, so he's covering that as a newspaper reporter. But you get the idea 
that he senses that there's just no history. Now, he's coming out from World War II, so he sees the history that was destroyed in Europe. And he comes here and he watches the self-destruction, the, the American self-destruction of these cities uh, in, in, the, in the name of progress. And the people that get mowed under, the poor, the minorities, uh, the veterans that are homeless, the homeless population all get basically bulldozed over in this pursuit of progress and profits that is the American culture. Uh, homelessness, of course, is one of the, uh, the themes in this book in the treatment of the homeless. Uh, and he does get political in, in stages where you, you get the less than subtle idea that he's comparing McCarthyism. Uh, for those that aren't familiar with McCarthyism, McCarthy was a senator that uh, was paranoid of communists and infiltrating America. So he had these a blacklist, especially in Hollywood, where he blacklisted people. That anybody that was associated with uh, the Communist Party, socialism, democratic socialism, any of these forms, he, he categorized them all as communists and blacklisted them and pushed them out of work. And a lot of careers were ruined, especially in Hollywood, but elsewhere as well. Uh, he compares that to what Trump is doing now and equates it both to fascism. Uh, so there's some overt political themes. He, he's less subtle in some of those areas. Uh, so he covers a lot of themes in this book um, that that get intertwined, sometimes very well, very very well crafted, and sometimes it's a little blatant. Can be a little straightforward. I guess that. that still goes with noir narratives and hard-boiled detective fiction. Sometimes they were in their monologues, they were quite overt in their political statements, the, the writers I'm talking about, and even in the Hollywood scripts, they, they were quite overt in some of these references. Um, so my question at the, uh, as I was progressing through this thing was, was this did poetry add to the genre of noir? Was it done better as a narrative poem than the original prose writers? And as fond as I am of poetry, and as I, am, I prefer poetry to prose, I can't say that that particular criteria was met. I've read some of Chandler's, I've read some of Elroy's, and I've read some of the other uh, noir fiction and hard-boiled detective fiction. Not a great fan of it, but I've read some enough of it to know that that Robin Robinson really didn't advance the idea of noir in this thing more than noir advanced the poetry of this thing. Now, that's not to say that this isn't good poetry. There is some good poetry in this book, and, and Robin Robinson has his own particular dark voice, but he certainly captured that noir essence, that essence that is the noir voice. And there's others that do it so much better than I do. So I'm going to link below a uh, another YouTube video that recites a lot of passages. They connect, not always chronologically, but they connect a lot of these passages from this book and have that smoky jazz sounds in the back and the, the, the images of L.A., downtown L.A. in the background as, as a very talented voice actor is, is reciting the, the lines. Does it far better than I could ever do. So I'm going to link that below. Um, if you want a taste of what noir sounds like from the old movies and from the books, Robin Robinson, especially in the beginning passages in this, captures it perfectly. It's done perfectly in, in the, uh, at least the first two sections. Toward the end of the third section and some parts of the fourth section, I felt like I was hearing more of, of Robin Robinson's original, his voice, his regular poetry voice, if, if I could put it that way, uh, more than the noir sound. But it, 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 it went in and out. The noir stayed through there. But it's especially captured beautifully in the first two and most of the third and, and throughout. But if you want to hear that noir voice, so 
Click on that video below if you really want to hear a noir done right. The way they, they do it in that video is perfect. And it was done in cooperation of, with Robin Robinson. So it, it, it's, it's got his permission and, and the, um, the, the whole thing is put together beautifully. So what I wanted to do is kind of cover a few things that, it, from the poetry aspect because it's, I'm more concerned about the poetry. Um, so he can give you the, new, the, the link below will give you the noir sense and it will give you a really good overview of the way this book works. Um, so what I want, uh, just a few little touches that, that aren't added, that are in poetry that you wouldn't get off a recitation unless you're looking at it. So in the beginning part of the book, talking about a, a gentleman that's gone through flashbacks and has PTSD and has the flashbacks to the, to the war. So in the beginning part of the book, we have, um, so it comes in, in two different pages. So here we have the poetry form, and then it flips over to this side where the flashbacks are done in more of a prose, prose poetry or prose that you wanted to go see flashback. And then it goes back to the time, the, the present time frame of when he's experiencing this. And then he has another flashback. But the flashbacks are done in italics and in prose poetry. And so the first flashback here, so let me, I'll, re, I'll read a little bit of this, but if you really want to know what noir sounds like, go to the link below, but I'll read it so you get an idea of what I'm talking about with the flashbacks and how he changes this and it develops. And that's what I'm trying to get with the poetry part. So uh, he's speaking to this taxi driver. He says, uh, you fight in the war, buddy? Uh, yeah, I fought. Save the free world, did you, pal? Something like that. The free world, thank you. French and the Dutch did, huh? Not us, though, Americans. Can't say as I've noticed. But then, you're a Canuck. Sitting high above the sweep of Broad Cove, watching the sun set over Prince Edward Island, the last light catching the end of the harrow, the leaves of the loose leaf turning red, and the seals asleep on Marguerite Island, the Sea Wolf Island, north of here. The trees by the East River have things snagged in their lowest branches, clothes, fish crates, ropes, and snacks, bodies sometimes, people say, trapped there by the tides, the ice. We have another flashback. It's the wire. They're caught deep in the bob wire and can't get free, can't get out of the water and onto the beach. They're waving their arms and screaming, but the landing craft just goes over them. The propellers cutting them apart. So you see how he's using prose and poetry together in almost a metamodernist way, which I won't touch on here, but he goes from speaking to this driver and talking about whether his experience in the war to it, the driver mentions that he's a Canadian from Nova Scotia. So he flashes back to there to his childhood and the beauty of that setting. And then it's back to the present where he sees the East River and he knows that there's bodies caught in the tide, and that immediately causes a flashback to the bodies he saw on the beach during a beach landing in World War II. So it's a, now a military flashback, a PTSD flashback. So he, the, he uses that, that technique of, of present-day flashbacks to great effect throughout the book. It's, it's wonderfully done. Uh, and as I said, you're, you're watching this narrator deteriorate into self-destruction. So I'm, I'm skipping over a lot of different yeah, things, yeah. a lot of different um, issues and stuff. I just want to want to focus on just one part of the poetry. Toward the end of, uh, you're now two-thirds of the way through the book, and we're watching this person self-destruct. And then you have this poetry section that goes from one page to another. But in this poetry section, he starts out in the present, keeps going in the present, and then suddenly flashes back in the midst of that. So there's no longer a differentiation between his present day situation and his past. It's through alcoholism and, and the self-destructive behavior, this is, is beginning to consume him to where 
he can't differentiate between the flashback and the present day. And this is part of the self-destruction, part of the, the process of self-destruction or the, the experience of self-destruction. And Robin Robinson uses the poetic form and the changing of this, you have the present day flash, present day two, it all goes into one in his head, in his mind. And that's done to great effect here. That's just one of the, I can't say, several techniques that he uses as a poetry form that you don't get in the prose uh, that he uses to great effect in making this uh, a good read. Now, I'm more of an optimist than uh, Robin Robinson, noir aficionados. This is definitely, I, I, this is all from reading through once, picking up on some of the stuff that he, reading through once. This is certainly a book that I will read again and again. I know it's not for everyone, though. This is a dark experience. This is, there's no redeeming qualities in, in most of the characters. There's a few with redeeming qualities, but not so much that, that it would help you to see a lighter side of this thing. This is the process of watching someone self-destruct. Um, but it is very much noir. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, this is an excellent example of noir fiction. If you're an aficionado of a noir idea, and if you like narrative poetry that has a darker side, this this would be this is not for everybody. Last year there was a, a tag in Poetry Tube, a book tube, where you would recommend a book, but only to a few select people. That is not for the wider audience. This would not be for those that like YA or uh, lighthearted romps. This is not that book. Um, but if you like narrative poetry, if you like noir. This is an excellent book. He uses techniques to, to great effect. It's a little uneven toward the end, I would think, um, between his voice and the noir voice. Uh, when he starts, especially when he starts getting political, he starts speaking in his own voice versus the noir narrative voice. Um, but it's forgivable. Um, and it's not that it would distract from the overall experience of the book. So there's my review. Poetry Tube. Um, I thank you for spending some time with me this afternoon. Have a great day.